morning. Well, a very happy Super Bowl day to all of you. I hope if you are interested in the Super Bowl and it's pleasurable and meaningful for you, that you have a wonderful day enjoying that this afternoon. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Wait a minute, I gotta back up here a minute. Today, the 13th of February, is I hope the last time I ever have to give a talk to an empty room. It's a very, it's a very mm, awkward experience to say the least. Next Sunday, the 20th, we're back in the house. And we are also going to have um, a lady from Cots, two ladies from Cots actually, going to be here and tell us about what Cots is doing and may have something that you might find enriching to be a part of. So that's next Sunday. Look forward to seeing all of your live, breathing, loving bodies here, 11 a.m. Okay, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. I'm going to talk about that just a little bit. And then I'm going to kind of evolve a little. As I think back, you know, my last marriage came to an end in 2005. I've had a couple of lady friends over the years, but nothing really serious or permanent or long term. Or I've just had some very nice experiences in my life. And uh, but Valentine's Day hasn't really been a significant holiday for Patrick Michael in many, many years. But I got to thinking, you know, here. A few weeks ago, I met a lady who was very attractive, seemed to be very smart, was quite a good conversationalist, and we kind of had a few conversations in passing, and one day she invited me over to her house for lunch. And I thought, okay, I can do this. Who knows? Well, we may actually build a friendship here. And, wow, when I got to her house, she invited me in, and she was in her bare feet. And I didn't pay much of attention to begin with, but eventually I looked down at her feet, and I was freaked out. She only had four toes on each foot. She was missing the pinky toe on each one of her feet. That blew my mind. I just <clears throat> mixed me all up. I haven't called her back. I haven't talked to her since. It was just, <sighs> I don't know. And I was talking to my friend Sylvan about this, and he said, well, Pat, quite frankly, I think you're being a bit shallow. And I think, no, nah, I think this is more complex than shallow. I think, uh, I think it's something that I'm not alone in having. That thing called, what is it, lacking toes intolerant? Well, that was supposed to be funny. I hope you thought it was as hilarious as I did when I heard it. But this is Valentine's Day, and I wanted to share with you some wisdom, and I thought, well, who better to get wisdom from than from people, famous people who have made some famous quotes and statements about love. So if you ever have a couple, three weeks with nothing better to do, just Google quotes on love. I kind of scanned through 23, 24,000 of them, and I came up with a few that I thought might have some nourishment value to us. Helen Keller said that the, the, the best and most beautiful things in this life can't be seen or even heard. They must be felt with the heart. And somebody else who I can't remember now said that love does not make the world go round. 
love is what makes the experience worthwhile. And Voltaire said that love is the canvas furnished by nature and embroidered by imagination. Maya Angelou says, love knows no barriers. And a very interesting one, Lao Tzu, that being deeply loved by someone gives you strength, while loving someone deeply gives you courage. Read that again. Being deeply loved by someone gives you strength, and while loving someone deeply gives you courage. And Maury's buddy, Jackson Brown, he said that love is when the other person's happiness is more important than your own. And almost done here, Rumi says that love is the whole thing, and we are only the pieces. And I'd like to end this, close this group of quotations from a quote from Snoopy's daddy, Charles Schultz. He said, all you need in this life is love, but a little chocolate now and then doesn't hurt. And so it is. I'd like to evolve, and I hope you all have a pleasant and happy thank, uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, I'd like to talk now a little bit about maybe a different kind of love than the love we associate with Valentine's Day. I heard something quite a while ago that has oh, stayed in my conscious and my subconscious kind of like that little voice, that little voice you hear when you're walking through the Walmart park, parking lot and you get over by your car and you look down and there's a wallet, you just reach down and pick it up, get in your car, open it up and there's $500 in it. And you sit it on the seat next to you and you hear this little voice all the way that little voice, that conscience, that, I don't know. That's what this story left me with. I, I, I know that this is a third or fourth handed story. I, I don't even remember where I heard it. But it, originally, it was told by a Holocaust survivor. And he was in the Auschwitz camp and one day a friend of his approached him and said I believe that this is my last day on this earth and would you please pray with me so the gentleman telling the story said yes and the man said, God in heaven, I want to give thanks to you for all of the love that I have experienced and known in my life. The love of my family, my wife, my children, my parents, my friends and my neighbors, my community. Love in all configurations, all different ways. I want to thank you with my entire being for the joy and the fulfillment that that love in my life allowed me to experience. And I want to thank you again for 
be able to honestly say on this last day of my life that I am coming to the end of this life with absolutely no fear and no hatred and no malice in my mind or my heart. And that is the result of the love I have known. I give thanks. Amen. Two hours later, he was exterminated. Ponder that story. It's true. Let that soak into your head and your heart and your mind and your feelings and your soul, whatever you want to call all those parts of you. I've thought about my life. And as I look back on my life, most of what I reflect on, remember, treasure, value, are experiences of love. And I can honestly say I hold no malice to anyone. I've lived through some pretty crummy crap in my life, as most of us have. I've been married and divorced three times. I have no bitter feelings across the board. In fact, I value every one of those relationships that I was lucky enough to have. The only place I, I have a trouble with holding malice is with this guy right here. And I need to allow the love that I have known I'll never forget walking through the line last April, walking through the, the potluck line and seeing somebody pull a cake out of a box. And I said, well, I wonder whose anniversary it is. They should have told me I could have announced it from the pulpit. Come to find out it was mine. You all showed me your love and appreciation and respect and acceptance for my 20 years of service here at Church of the Oaks. I am so loved. I have known off the charts love and affection in every type of meaning of love you can think of. I think the most work I need to do on expanding that feeling of love or finding that experience of love is with this guy, myself. You know, I, I just, I've got to ask each one of you, think back through your life. As you look at those experiences of your life, the ones that are valuable to you, we all have pain, and that can stick out in memory, but that doesn't have value. But the things that you value and make you smile, and that you don't ever, ever, ever want to forget. I'm betting everything I own that every one of those is built on love, the result of love. And I think knowing this con congregation, this family of mine here at the corner of West Sierra and Page, I feel so much love and acceptance from you as I just walk across the floor 
as we sit next door having coffee, as we have conversation about different facets of life. But I'm thinking that probably most of the people in this marvelous family have some of the same issues that I do with me. Keep thinking about that one sentence. Love doesn't make the world go round, but it makes the experience worthwhile. Yeah. That's what we remember. That's where the joy comes from. That's where those wonderful, wonderful, unstoppable tears come. I hope all of you can take some time, maybe before the Super Bowl party, or maybe after, or maybe tomorrow morning when you get up, wow, this is Valentine's Day. I'm not, especially, I don't especially have a sweetheart or anything, but think of the sweethearts that you have been fortunate enough to have in your life. Those experiences. I heard something years ago. I think it was, oh, back in the 70s. I was down in Tulsa. Actually, I was playing guitar at Oral Roberts University. I heard, maybe it was Oral Roberts, maybe it was somebody else say, you know, love is wonderful. And being in love, there's nothing like it. And he said, and the relationships that last, the marriages that last, it's amazing how quick the passion of being in love evolves into compassion, the compassion of loving. How soon the passion transforms and elevates into compassion. I got to thinking about this day and this talk and the words I've said. I'm going to sing a song. I did a little check-in. The last time I played my guitar during a service, it was New Year's Eve, December 31st, 2017. So I think I'm going to do it again today. today. This is a song that was, I don't know for sure if he wrote it or not, but I, I remember him playing it done by Jerry Reed. That's the guy that was the truck driver and Smokey and the Bandit. Anyway, uh, this was, I think, the, the nicest song Jerry ever did. He stood six foot six with his feet on the ground, weighed 235 pounds, but a softest giant of a man brought down to his knees by love. He was the kind of man that would look you in the eye. <laughs> he was the kind of man that would gamble on love, look you in the eye and never back up. But I saw him crying like a little whip pup because of love. Can't see it with your eyes, hold it with your hand. But like the wind that covers this land, strong enough to rule the heart of any man, this thing called love. Most folks are like me, they struggle and doubt, work their minds day in, day out. Too busy with living to worry about a little thing called love. 
I see a mother's tenderness as she holds that young babe to her breast. I thank God this world's been blessed by this thing called love. Can't see it with your eyes, hold it with your hand, but like the wind that covers this land, strong enough to rule the heart of any man, this thing called love. It can lift you up, it can knock you down, it can take your world and turn it all around. But ever since time, nothing's ever been found. Stronger than love. I love you all, and so it is.